Purpose On Purpose Podcast. Got a phone call from a heroic small business owner the other day. A team member, an employee that he had to let go a while back, messaged him and said, hey, um, I'm in really bad shape. I don't have a job. I've been able to find a job. I'm a single parent. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And I really don't have a place to stay for me and my child anymore. What do you do with that? Hey, it's Scott Beebe with the Business on Purpose podcast. The goal to help you be liberated from the chaos of working your business and to really know how to make tough decisions and work through tough decisions like this. You know, it was a tough situation because the team member was not performing anywhere near to what the standard of the job role was or what the vision, mission, values of the business is. And so that's what that's what led to the dismissal in the first place. And since that time, uh, this particular team member has, or former team member, has really, really struggled, obviously, and what's there. And, and hearing the message uh, when this business owner called me and hearing uh, kind of how it played out, it triggered in my mind the reality that a number of heroic small business owners are in right now, and that is learning how to both work through challenging team members, but but more importantly than that, working to, through the benefit of the doubt, trying to develop, grow, train young team members, young employees. And they're really struggling with how to do that because as a generation has come in, the generational transition is very, very different. And I'm reading a book right now by Tim Elmore, It's called Marching Off the Map, Inspire Students to Navigate a Brand New World. And Tim Elmore has got some deep research in this book that I think is very well worth you reading through. For instance, millennial or or Gen Y, they use technology for entertainment, whereas homelanders or Gen Zers, folks born from 2001 to 2018, will use technology to learn. They'll use technology to learn. Now, I've heard Mark Cuban, I'm going to come back to my original point here in a minute, but I heard Mark Cuban a few years ago say there's going to be a pending pending higher education bubble. Uh, Dr. Clayton Christensen from Harvard is sort of espousing the same thing. What does that mean? Well, student loans have gotten completely out of control. Tuition's gotten completely out of control. And just like the tech bubble that burst in the late uh, 90s or the housing bubble that burst in 07, 08, 09, there is going to be a higher uh, uh, higher education bubble, and you're going to start seeing the bottom 10%, the bottom 20% of higher edu- uh, higher institutions begin to fail. Now, you might go, there's no way. Uh, actually, step back for just a second to yesterday. At the time of this recording, the parent company that owns Virginia College, Brightview College, and a, and a number of other for-profit colleges. Now, these are for-profit colleges. But the entity that owns those yesterday announced that they're closing their doors. I'm told that there are 19,000 students within their ecosystem around the United States. They're closing their doors. These students, at the time of this recording, are in the middle of their final preparation, finals uh, exams. And we're told by school leaders that the doors are shutting. So what does that mean? Will the federal government come in and help preserve some of those credits? I don't know they don't know. What it does mean, though, is the accreditation institution pulled their accreditation right in the middle of finals. So you have people that have pulled school school loans, they're paying for college, that are going through, that have racked up credits, they've racked up debt, and now they're left standing with nothing. I'm sure there will be some restitution somehow, who knows, but the reality is today, the higher education bubble is starting to burst. So, enter a letter written by a principal to a former student's mom who they were good friends they're family friends and they have kids that are the same age and this principal wrote a letter apologizing for letting down the student who is 25 years old living at home unemployed and dealing with mental health issues the principal felt like he had something to do with that in terms of his leadership because in the letter he said i felt like it was more about test scores finland and singapore than it was about embedding the real skills that students need. And so what are those real skills? And what are these skills that you as a business owner can begin to embed into your young employees? He lays out six in this letter. Number one, emotional intelligence. 
What is that? Well, I just got done with a breakfast with six, uh, five 10th grade boys. We've been meeting for about a year and a half now. And I brought this up to them. We watched the eulogy that George W. Bush just gave for his father, George H. W. Bush. And I had them each have a note card and a pen and they were to write down whatever they saw, felt, or heard. And we defined emotional intelligence as simply being smart about your emotions. If somebody picks a fight with you in the hallway at the school, be smart about your emotion. That's emotional intelligence. And so this principle was bemoaning the fact that they had not done a good job of preaching and teaching emotional intelligence. The second thing is social intelligence, awareness. At the place that we meet for breakfast, the person standing behind the register did not look me in the eye, did not ask politely and kindly, how's your day? He, he simply mumbled, looking down, what do you want to order? And it wasn't even that clear. And so we were able to even get a real case study on social intelligence, eye contact, conversational discussion, handshaking, door opening, smiling, countenance, those sorts of things. Emotional intelligence, social intelligence. The principle goes on. The third thing, work ethic, showing up on time, ready to go, uh, giving more than you're taking, etc. Work ethic, resilience. Think of a tennis ball when you squeeze it and it bounces right back. Teaching that resilience that when they get a C, they can bounce back and try to shoot for a B, shoot for an A, instead of getting totally depressed and having to sit in a psychiatrics, uh, psychiatrist office. And the fifth and sixth thing he mentioned, obviously, uh, business on mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. This is a huge thing for us. Vision and leadership. Number five and number six are vision, having a clear, descript destination of where you want to go in life, and leadership, having the ability to lead others to that point. Emotional intelligence, social intelligence, work ethic, resilience, vision, and leadership. Gang, we've got to start teaching that. And if you can't, if, if your team members are not being taught that or did not get that in school, at home, around their peers, then the onus is on you as a business owner to be able to teach it. How do we do that? We'll go back to the last podcast when I talked about actually scheduling time to teach Life 101. Well, this is curricula for Life 101. I know it's not a lot of fun. I know you wish they would have gotten this in school. I know you wish they would have gotten this at home, but they're not. The first place for you to start, mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. Write a vision out for what it looks like to teach your team members these six things. And we'll see you next time right here on the Business on Purpose podcast.